In Independence Square in Kiev, there are shrines and photographs to remember those who died at the hands of the riot police. Here in Lenin Square in Donetsk, there are shrines and photographs to remember the riot police who died, they say, at the hands of the protesters. It's easy to conclude, therefore, that this is a country neatly divided, but of course that's far from the case. There are many political structures uh, springing up all over the place across this country. It is fair to say, though, that by and large there has been a pretty cautious welcome for developments in Geneva. I'm happy with the news from Geneva. I'm thankful for the support of Russia. We're normal people. We are glad that this government will now listen to us ordinary, decent people so we can move forward in a peaceful way. Well, the world leaders get together and agree a plan and people are told there is now a way forward. Well, not quite. We know what the angry minorities don't want with the balaclavas and petrol bombs. They've made it clear in different groups they don't want to be part of Russia. They don't want a federation. They don't want to be part of Kiev. But what about the millions of Ukrainians just living their daily lives? They've now been told that the crisis will de-escalate and that they will be given a forum, a place to share and pool their views about the way forward for this country. I hate to use the word impossible, but it is a big ask. The issue of anti-Semitism is a more complicated one for the political scene here in Ukraine. It is true that masked men appeared outside the synagogue here a few days ago handing out leaflets demanding that all Jewish people register with the local authorities. We shrugged it off at the time, but when Secretary of State John Kerry mentioned it again in Geneva, we had to take it further. Anti-Semitism has an extraordinarily unpleasant history in this country. And although most of the families that were alive during the Second World War have passed on, they've left those memories with the families here that at times the unthinkable can actually come to pass. It's, a, it's terrible to think someone is studying on the computer and is printing a special flyer and could be he, 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 he just find the text <laughs> from the 40s and he, he, and he put it on this flyer. This is terrible. And I'm asking all the politics leaders in Ukraine, please leave us, us quietly and alone. The anti-Semitism row is also a reminder for people like us of the conviction in countries like this that there are always dark forces at work behind the scenes. Trust is what Sergei Lavrov and John Kerry are battling to achieve. And that's a quality that we've learned here in the past couple of months is in dangerously short supply. There's a lack of trust around.